Hello guys, welcome back. So in this video, we will be learning about integer arithmetic coding. In the previous video, we saw binary arithmetic coding. Now we will see the integer version. In this video, we will see the encoding part. So let's start. So here I have the problem. Consider the source S with letters A, B, C, H with probabilities 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. And you have to encode the message a b b c h okay so the algorithm for this is similar to the previous algorithm that is arithmetic coding with output bits just the difference is here we are using integer values instead of floating point values okay so here is the algorithm for output bits integer version so the only change here is here we are using a variable called m and it is a integer value okay it is not a floating point value okay so this is your output bits function and this is your final function finish arithmetic encoding this is the last step in the problem so for the integer version we use m by 4 here in the floating point version we used to have 0.25 here if you remember okay so now let's start so here are the source and the probabilities now you have to calculate some variables okay so first there is something called fn here in this problem fn is 10 okay so now how to calculate fn is that you have to find the smallest probability in this probability set okay and you have to find out the smallest one and the fn will be the minimum or the smallest number required to make that smallest probability an integer value okay meaning fn can be 10 100 1000 and so on okay so here the smallest probability is 0 0.1 okay so now by how, how much we have to multiply so that this point 0.1 becomes integer okay so see here starting with 10 so after multiplying by 10 what we get we get a 1 here which is an integer okay so the minimum value that you can multiply to convert this value to the integer that is your fn value okay and fn can be 10, 100, 1000 and so on ok now suppose this was 0 0.01 ok so what will so what would have been your fn your fn would have been 100 why because to convert 0 0.01 into an integer value you will have to multiply that number by 100 ok so your fn would have been 100 in that in that case ok so here your minimum probability is 0 0.1 so you have the minimum value that you have to multiply this way number is 10 okay to convert it to integer value okay so i hope you got how to calculate fn so next we have something called k which is given by log to the base 2 4 into fn okay so log to the base 2 4 what is fn 10 so this answer evaluates to 6 ok you get some 5 point something answer they have to that you have to round to 6 ok round to next integer so you get a 6 here next IIR is initial interval range so this is your initial range in the floating point version what was your, what was your initial range 0 comma 1 ok so here also you have an initial range so how do you get it the left hand side is 0 comma right hand side is 2 raised to k minus 1 now you have the value of k here so 2 raised to 6 is 64 minus 1 so you get 63 here ok and remember these brackets here in the floating point version we used to have a square bracket and a parenthesis bracket here both the brackets are square brackets ok so you get 0 0.63 as your initial interval range 
नेक्स्ट कैलकुलेट एम एम बाय टू एम बाय फोर एंड थ्री एम बाय फोर ओके सो व्हाट इज एम एम इज योर टू रेस टू के ओके सो टू रेस टू सिक्स इज सिक्सटी फोर दैट इज योर एम नेक्स्ट एम बाय टू दैट इज सिक्सटी फोर बाय टू थर्टी टू एम बाय फोर दैट इज सिक्सटी फोर बाय फोर सिक्सटीन एंड थ्री एम बाय फोर दैट इज थ्री इंटू सिक्सटी फोर बाय फोर यू गेट फोर्टी एट ओके सो दीज आर द वैल्यूज टू बी कैलकुलेटेड इनिशियली ओके सो सो हियर आई हैव दिस सिंप्लीफाइड एल्गोरिदम दिस आउटपुट बिट्स ओके सो दिस इज योर बेसिक एल्गोरिदम आई हैव सिंप्लीफाइड इट हियर जस्ट लाइक द फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट वन ओके सो यू हैव टू चेक द करंट इंटरवल फॉर दिस थ्री केसेस ओके सो लेट्स मूव हेड सो आई द प्रॉब्लम हियर एंड दिस आर द कैलकुलेटेड वैल्यूज ओके now see here we have to calculate four more values f1 f2 f3 and f4 okay this will be using while calculating the sub intervals okay so what is your f1 f1 is the probability after multiplying fn okay so of multiply this number by 10 so what do you get 4 next f2 You add this and add this two and multiply by ten. You get seven. Now what is F three? Add this three, multiply by ten. You get eight. And add all this and multiply by ten. You get ten here. Okay. So just multiply this each values and add them together. Okay. So you get the F value. Okay. so this f1 will be used for first interval sub interval f2 for the second sub interval this for the third and this for the fourth okay so let's move ahead so here i have the table the, this table is similar to the one that we use for the floating point encoding okay so you, we have bit count here current interval input letter output bit and sub intervals okay so what do you do first take this initial i i i r that is 0,63 as your initial interval okay current interval so now what you do take the first input letter that is a then divide this interval into sub intervals okay now see here division of sub intervals is a little different here okay so i'll show you how to make this sub intervals there is a little different formula for this okay so let's see for 0.63 how to calculate the sub intervals so see here i have the formula this one is for the first column and this one is for the remaining columns okay so i have the f values So now let's calculate the sub intervals for zero comma sixty three. Okay. So please follow the same order as I will be following. Okay. So what is the first step? Use this formula. So what your your L is zero and R is sixty three. Okay. So take this zero here as it is. Next L plus that is zero plus R minus L plus one that is. Sixty three minus zero plus one. Okay, into F I. Now you will be using F one here because this is the first sub interval. Okay, so that's why we you will use F one. What is F one? Four. So multiply it by four, and you have to divide this this entire thing by ten. Okay, see here divide by F n. Okay, so whatever your F n substitute it here, and then bracket close minus 1 okay so now see here how to evaluate this okay so first calculate this value that is 63 minus 0 plus 1 you get a 64 here okay next multiply 64 by 4 okay so after multiplying this 
you get a value here and then just divide it by 10 ok so whatever value you get here you have to divide it by 10 next you have to subtract 1 from it ok so first you let this then multiply then divide this result and then subtract 1 and then finally add this 0 ok so follow the same order as I have done so first this then multiply divide subtract and then add ok so if you follow this order you will get the correct answer ok so you will get a decimal a floating value here a floating point answer here so you have to just drop the uh, floating point value ok so you get 24 point something here that decimal point value you have to ignore ok so you just have to take the integer part ok so you get 24 here ok you have to ignore the fractional part ok so you get 0 here and this evaluates to 24 ok so let's move ahead let's find the second sub interval so substitute this in this formula so what do you do now see here in floating point what we used to do we used to take right of previous as the left of current ok here what we do we take the right of previous as the left of current plus 1 ok so right of previous plus 1 as the left of current ok so in the previous step we got 24 now we have to add 1 to it and take that value here ok see here right of previous plus 1 ok so 24 plus 1 you get a 25 here ok so right of previous plus 1 as the left of current 1 ok so now how to find this value use this right hand side ok so your L is 0 plus R minus L 65, 63 minus 0 plus 1 that is this plus 1 into 7 now Y7 you have to use the second F value here ok because this is the second sub interval so you have to use F2 ok so multiplied by 7 and divide by Fn what is your Fn 10 then this minus 1 ok now you will let this in this order so 63 minus 0 plus 1 then whatever you get here multiplied by 7 then divide it by 10 ok whatever you get this value divide it by 10 then after dividing subtract 1 from it and after that add this 0 to it ok so you will get 43 here ok so if you got a fractional value you have to drop the fractional part ok just take the integer part ok so you get 25 here and this evaluates to 43 ok next let's find the third sub interval so right of previous plus 1 as the left of current ok so 43 plus 1 44 now how to find this substitute this L and R in this formula so L is 0 plus R minus L 63 minus 0 plus 1 into F1 now you have to use F3 because third sub interval so F3 is 8 divided by Fn that is 10 minus 1 ok so this 44 comes here right as it is then evaluate this then multiply then divide then subtract and then add this 0 so you get 50 ok if you get the fractional part just ignore the fractional part just take the integer part ok so you got F3 sorry third sub interval next find the fourth one so right of previous plus 1 that is 50 plus 1 51 comma find this one so you get 63 R minus 0 plus 63 minus 0 plus 1 into F4 that is 10 divided by 10 Fn minus 1 so after evaluating this multiplying dividing subtracting and then adding you get 63 ok so this way you have to calculate the use F1 for this F2 for this F3 for this and F4 for this ok and you evaluate in this order so first this then multiplication then division then subtraction and then addition ok this way you will get the correct answer and if you get a fractional part just ignore the fractional part just take the integer part ok so 
you have got sub intervals for 0, 0,63 so these are the sub intervals that we got now what you have to do the procedure is similar to the floating point ok so you have a, a here check the position of a in source so is a is at position 1 1 2 3 4 a is at position 1 so you take the first sub interval as your next current interval ok so now check this interval in the output bits algorithm ok so see here I have written the values here for m by 2 m and 3 m by 4 and 3 m by 4 ok so now we have to find in which ranges in which of these ranges this sub interval falls ok so 0, 0,24 check for this one 0, 0,32 so 0 is greater than equal to 0 and 24 is less than 32 so it falls in this range ok so now what you have to do output 0 plus bit count number of ones so output a 0 and what is bit count bit count is 0 so you don't have to output any number of ones ok so you get a 0 here next set bit count to 0 bit count becomes 0 then double lower and upper bound and add to the add 1 to the upper bound of current interval so after doubling and adding 1 what do you get double of 0 is 0 double of 24 is 48 and you have to add 1 to the upper bound ok just remember this this is the extra step here ok so double and add 1 to the upper bound ok so next check this if this falls in any of this Three, any of those three ranges ok so 0, 0,49 so you have 32 here doesn't fall in this so we have a 0 at the left so it doesn't fall in this and we have 49 which is greater than 48 so it doesn't fall in this ok so when the current interval doesn't fall in any of the three ranges what we do we take the next input letter and divide this into sub intervals ok so let's divide this into sub intervals i'll show you for this one then for these three you can calculate for yourself okay so let's find the sub intervals of 0, 0,49 so see here 0, 0,49 now use this two formulas okay this one for the first sub interval and this is for the remaining three so use l as 0 and r as 49 here okay so first take this 0 as it is l value now what is L? 0 plus R minus L 49 minus 0 plus 1 now into F1. Why F1? Because this is the first sub interval. So into F1 divided by Fn. Fn is 10. Okay. This minus 1 as it is. So now evaluate in the same order as I told you for the previous sub interval. So evaluate this first then multiplication then division then subtraction and then addition. Okay so you get a 19 here okay so this 0 as it is and here we get 19 okay if you get any fractional part just ignore that and just take the integer value okay so you got your first sub interval next what you do right of previous plus 1 as the left of current one so 19 plus 1 20 okay so 20 now calculate the right hand side so l is 0 l plus r minus l 49 minus 0 plus 1 into now take f2 because this is the second sub interval f2 divided by fn fn is 10 minus 1 so first evaluate this multiply division then subtraction then addition you get 34 here ok so this 20 as it is and this comes evaluates to 34 ok next write of previous plus 1 as the left of current one so you get 34 plus 1 35 then use this formula this one so L plus R minus L this is 49 minus 0 plus 1 into F3. This is the third sub interval. That's why F3 divided by Fn that is 10 minus 1. So follow the order this and then this. So you get 39 here. Okay. Next right of previous plus 1 as the left of current 39 plus 1 40 then 0 plus R minus L 49 minus 0 plus 1 into F4. What is f4? 10. So divide by fn. fn is 10 minus 1. So after evaluating this, you get 49. Okay. So this 0 
this zero this zero is similar to this one and this 49 is this one okay so these values fall in between these two values okay that's why those are the sub intervals okay so we got our sub intervals see here these are the sub intervals that we got next what you have to do check the position of b in source b is at position 2 so you choose the second sub interval as your next current interval okay so now what you do when you get a new current interval check this current interval with the algorithm okay so 20 comma 34 so 20 comma 34 falls in this range okay so check from the left to right okay so 20 comma 34 doesn't fall in this okay see here 20 comma 34 so we have, we have a 34 greater than 32 we have a 32 which is greater than 20 okay so it doesn't fall in this 20 comma 34 falls between these two numbers okay 16 is less than 20 and 48 is great sorry this 20 is greater than 16 and this 34 is less than 48 so those two values falls between these two numbers okay so now what you have to do output nothing you have to don't you don't have to output anything increment the bit count okay so now bit count becomes one next separate m by 4 from lower and upper bound of cr what is m by 4 16 so subtract 16 double lower and upper bound and add one to the upper bound okay so subtract 16 double lower and upper bound from both and add one to the upper bound okay so, so first subtract from both then double both and after that add one to only the upper bound okay so you get these values okay you have to subtract 16 okay see here after subtracting 16 from 20 you get 4 after doubling you get 8 okay you don't have to add 1 to this one you have to add 1 to the upper bound okay so sub after subtracting 16 what do you get 18 here 18 into 2 you get 36 and after adding 1 you get 37 okay so this is your new current interval so what you do after getting new current interval check the new interval with the algorithm okay so 8 comma 37 doesn't fall in this because 37 is greater than 32 we have a 0 here so it doesn't fall in this one sorry we have a 8 here which is less than 32 and we have a 8 here which is less than 16 so it doesn't fall in any of this okay so what you do you stop the procedure and take the next input letter okay so next input letter is b okay so what do you do after taking the input letter you divide this interval into sub intervals okay so i've shown you how to calculate these intervals so accordingly you can find these intervals okay using the formula see here i've shown you two you can find this remaining okay so now check the position of b in source b is at position 2 so you choose the second sub interval as the next interval okay so now if you see 20 comma 28 falls in this one okay 28 is less than 32 and left hand side is greater than 0 okay so now what you do output a 0 and bit count number of ones so output a 0 what is bit count 1 so you add 1 number of ones okay so you get 0 1 here next what you do set bit count to 0 and double and add 1 to the upper bound so your bit count is 0 now okay in the next step so now what you do double that is double of 20 is 40 double of 28 is 56 and add 1 to the upper bound so you get 57 here okay so now check this new current interval with the algorithm okay so if you see it falls in this one okay 40 comma 57 okay it falls between these two numbers okay so now what you do output 1 plus bit count zeros so output a 1 what is bit count 0 so you don't have to output any zeros okay next what you do 
set bit count to 0 subtract m by 2 that is 32 subtract 32 double and then add 1 to the upper bound ok so now you get 16 comma 51 ok so now you got your new current interval now check this with the algorithm ok so if you see 16 comma 51 doesn't fall in this because 51 is greater than 32 then uh, 16 is less than 32 and 51 is greater than 48 ok so it doesn't fall in any of this so what you do you stop and take the next input letter ok that is C so now after taking the new input letter you divide this into sub intervals ok so these are the sub intervals you get next what you do check the position of input letter in source so C is at position 3 so you take the third sub interval as your next current interval ok so now check this with the algorithm so 41 comma 43 lies in this one ok so what you do output 1 plus bit count zeros so output the 1 bit count zeros so bit count is 0 so you don't have to add any number of zeros ok so you get just 1 next what you do you set bit count to 0 then subtract 32 that is m by 2 from lower and upper bound double lower and upper bound and add 1 to the upper bound ok so after doing that you get 18 comma 23 ok after subtraction doubling and adding 1 to the upper bound so you get 18 comma 23 now 18 comma 23 see here falls in this range ok since 18 is greater than 0 and 23 is less than 32 so this case is satisfied so now you have to output a 0 plus bit count once so you have to output a 0 what is your bit count 0 so you don't have to any you don't have to add any ones ok so next set bit count to 0 double lower and upper bound and add 1 to the upper bound ok so after doing that you get 86 comma 47 sorry 36 comma 47 ok so now what you do check this current it double with the algorithm ok so 36 comma 47 falls between these two numbers ok so now what you do output a 1 plus bit count zeros ok so output a 1 bit plus bit count zeros what is bit count still 0 so you don't add any zeros ok next what you do set bit count to 0 subtract 32 double and add 1 to the upper bound so after doing that what you get is 8,31 ok after subtracting doubling and adding 1 ok so now check this with the algorithm so 8,31 falls in this range ok you have to start from left to right so 8,31 falls in this so what do, you, what do you do output a 0 plus bit count once so you have to output a 0 what is bit count still 0 so you don't have to add any ones ok so next what you do set bit count to 0 double and add 1 to the upper bound ok so after doing that you get 16 comma 63 ok so 16 comma 63 if you see doesn't fall in this this or this ok so now what you do you stop and take the next input letter that is hash ok so after taking the next new input letter what you do divide this into sub intervals so these are the sub intervals that you get next check the position of hash in source so hash is at position 4 so you choose the fourth sub interval as your next current interval ok so 54 comma 63 if you see 54 comma 63 falls in this one ok so what you do output a 1 plus bit count zeros so you have to output a 1 plus bit count zeros what is your bit count still 0 so you don't have to output any zeros ok so just 1 
so next what you do bit count to 0 set bit count to 0 subtract 32 double lower and upper bound and add 1 to the upper bound ok so after doing that you get 44 comma 63 ok so check this with the algorithm so 44 comma 63 if you see doesn't fall in this it falls in this ok so 44 comma 63 so 44 is greater than the 2 and 63 is less than 64 so it falls in this so you have to output 1 plus bit count zeros so you have to put 1 what is bit count still 0 so you don't have to output any zeros ok next subtract 32 double and add 1 to the upper bound so you, what you get is these two values 24 and 63 now check this new interval with the algorithm ok so 24 comma 63 doesn't fall in this neither in this and nor in this ok so what do you do you stop and check for the next input letter so if you see you have processed your entire input and you don't have any input further ok so you stop and implement the last function that is this one finish arithmetic encoding ok so what do you do increment bit count and check if lower bound of current interval is less than m by 4 your m by 4 in this case is 16 so check this lower bound it is 24 which is greater than 16 so this condition is not satisfied if condition so what do you do you go to the else part so you output 1 plus bit count number of zeros so you have incremented your bit count so your bit count is 1 so you output a 1 plus bit count number of zeros bit count is 1 so you output 1 0 ok so this is your final step ok so you got your output bits so just concatenate them so you get 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 ok so this is the final output that you get ok so just remember how to get these variables first ok this one fn fn can be 10 100 1000 ok depending on the probability so fn is the smallest value that you need to multiply to the smallest probability to convert it to an integer ok so smallest probability here is 0.1 if you multiply it by 10 you get an integer ok next calculate this fn ok considering these probabilities ok multiplying by 10 then your k value initial interval and m ok then you have to remember the formula for calculating the sub intervals ok so this one for the first column this one for the remaining columns ok and you just have to remember this algorithm and this last step ok that's all so I hope it was clear to you if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section okay so thank you for watching keep learning